Hello everyone. In this brief video, we will discuss who or what is responsible for whatever is the performance of a portfolio. And we are going to call this performance attribution. Well, an easy way to look at it is to say that the performance of a portfolio could depend on two broad reasons. Let's make a note of these two reasons here. Well, how we allocate funds over different asset classes could have an impact on how our portfolio is performing. So let's write down the first reason here, asset allocation. Asset allocation. Well, we may invest some percentage of our funds in equities, another percentage in, let's say, debt securities, and yet another percentage in risk-free assets. So what we are saying is that how we are distributing our funds or allocating our funds to broad asset classes can affect the performance of a portfolio. Now, within each asset class, we focus on various sectors and then the securities or assets within the sector. So we have to select some securities within each asset class now. And that could be the second reason um, that could affect the performance of our portfolio. So we could write it here as security selection. So two reasons here, asset allocation and security selection within each asset class. Now, since each asset class contributes something to portfolio performance, we need to see how much of this contribution is because of our asset allocation decisions and how much is because of our security selection. Let us say we have a benchmark for each asset class. So let me write this word here, benchmark. Well, what, what's a benchmark? Some, some sort of a standard. For example, S&P 500 index could be a benchmark for equities. Likewise, other asset classes would also have benchmarks. Now let us say we allocate X be one proportion of our funds to asset class one, where X is the weight and B1 is the benchmark for asset class one. Likewise, we could invest another proportion to asset class two and yet another pro proportion to let's say asset class 3 and we could go on depending on how many asset classes we are con contemplating. Let's also say that the return offered by the benchmark for the first asset class is RB1. For this one it's RB2. For this one it's RB3 and so on it could be it could go on till RBN. So that if we have a portfolio of benchmarks, what return this portfolio is going to offer us? Let's write it as capital R and B for benchmarks. So the return would be for all asset classes varying from 1 to N, we multiply the proportions XBI times RBI. So this would be the return offered to us by a portfolio of benchmarks. Well, before we move further, we need to ask why we have decided to allocate what we allocate to each asset class. For example, if I say I'm going to allocate 80, 10 and 10 over equity, debt and T-bills, well, I need to then provide a justification for this 80-10-10 scheme. Well, somebody could ask me, why not 70-20-10? Well, the weightings are going to depend on our clients' willingness to take risk. If a particular investor, for example, is very risk averse, I, as a portfolio manager, in consultation with him or her, may decide on a weighting of, let's say, 20 70, 10, distributed over equity, bonds, and T-bills respectively. Now, if I decide to deviate from these weightings, I must provide a reason for it. Otherwise, the client is wishing that these should be the weights in which he or she wants to proceed further for his or her investment. Well, let us say I do decide to deviate from the agreed upon weightings. 
what will happen then is that I'm going to create a new portfolio. Let's say that this portfolio is called portfolio P. And like we calculated the return for our benchmark portfolio here, we can calculate the return for the new portfolio that I'm constructing by deviating from, let's say, these were the agreed upon weightings for equity, bonds and T-bills. If I deviate from these weightings, I'm creating a new portfolio and the return for that would be, let's write it here, summation of I varying from 1 to N. Well, something wants to install here on my computer, I'll say later. So I varying from 1 to N, we are taking a sum of, let's say, X, this time XPI times RPI. So this is the return on the portfolio that I have constructed. Now in creating portfolio P, I would have selected some securities within each asset class using my own judgment or skill or expertise, call it what you will. Now if the return on this portfolio differs from the return that is offered by the benchmark portfolio, it could only be because of two reasons. Either the reason is that I'm using different weights, I'm deviating from the agreed upon weighting scheme. So my asset allocation may be making a difference. Asset allocation could be the reason I'm using different weights. Another reason could be that I have used my own expertise or judgment or skill or maybe it's just pure luck. And because of that, the return that is being offered to me here by the individual assets in each asset class is different from what is offered by the benchmark. Well, let's say if the S&P 500 index is offering me a 5% return per annum, by selecting some other stocks, I may either outperform that benchmark or underperform that benchmark. So this return, so the difference in this return could be another reason why my portfolio return is different from the return offered by the benchmark portfolio. So we could write that again as security selection. So let us say then that the return on the portfolio that I have constructed as a portfolio manager is not equal to what is the return offered by the benchmark portfolio. If I want to write the difference in returns of these two portfolios, I can simply subtract one return from the other. Let's just write it here formally. RP minus RB. We want to find out how much is the difference between returns of these portfolios. So let's write it here. I'm just using what we wrote before. I'm first of all writing the return offered by portfolio P. And from that, I'm subtracting the return that is offered by the benchmark portfolio. XBI times RBI. Right, I could take this sum sign outside the bracket so that inside what I have is only the terms. XPI times RPI minus XBI times RBI. So this is the difference in returns of the two portfolios. Well, as we said before, the difference in returns could either be because of my asset allocation decision, which is now different from what we agreed upon here, or it may be because I have demonstrated some skills and I have been able to beat the benchmark, the security selection, or if my skills were poor, then the returns would be less than the benchmark. That would also be attributed then to how I selected the securities. What I need to do is to separate out these two effects. Well, this is the total difference between the returns of the two portfolios. I want to find out, well, this difference here, the total difference, how much of this can be attributed to, let's say, security selection? And how much of it can be attributed to asset allocation? That is all that I want to do. Let me complete this word here, security selection. Okay, let's talk about security selection first. Let's say, well, I'm investing this percentage of funds 
in my portfolio XPI and the difference between the returns of this portfolio from the benchmark portfolio may be because the assets that I have selected within each asset class offer me let's say this much return which is different from the returns that are offered by the benchmark. So this is the effect of security selection. We have just multiplied our portfolio weight by the differential returns. This is the second reason then, asset allocation. Well, it could be that the returns of my selected securities is not very different from the benchmark. And then what is making a difference? The only other thing that could make a difference would be how I am distributing my money over different assets. So how I allocate my funds across, across asset classes, in other words, the weightings that I'm using may be making a difference. We can write this as, well, the returns are not too different. So I'm just going to write the returns. I'm going to use the returns of the benchmark because they are not significantly different from the portfolio returns. What is making a difference is the difference in the weighting scheme. So this is the difference in the weighting scheme. And because this is for all the securities and all asset classes, let's not forget the sum signs. So this thing, this is the attribution to asset allocation here. You will notice that if we add these two terms, this one here and this one here, we are going to return to this equation. We can verify that out very quickly. Let's do it here. Well, let's add these two terms together. Let's say the total difference between the returns of my portfolio and the benchmark portfolio can be written as, let's write down this sum sign outside the bracket. And inside, let us write the contribution made by security selection, XPI times, well, let's multiply out these XPI times RPI minus XPI times RBI and we are adding to this the second term which is what let's multiply out these items RBI times X XPI minus RBI times XBI let's see now if something can cancel out well, we have a minus XPI times RBI here and we have a plus XPI times RBI here. So this is going to cancel out with this. So what we are going to have here now is XPI times RPI minus this item here XBI times RBI which is this item is the same thing as this item here. So if we add the contributions made by security selection and asset allocation decisions, we come back to the total difference between the returns of our portfolio and the return offered by the benchmark portfolio. But we have succeeded now in attributing this total difference to number one, security selection. This is the contribution of security selection and number two, the contribution made by our asset allocation decisions. Well, this is all I wanted to cover in this brief video. See you later.